In this demo, I'll show you the new preview feature, Service Configuration, that lets you reconfigure a virtual service after it has been created. For this scenario, we will take a look at a recently created virtual service that needs some changes to meet our requirements. Preview features are kept in the sandbox. So before we can use this feature, we need to enable service configuration from the sandbox. Now we are ready to make changes to an existing service. Here we have a virtual service that was recently recorded. However, there are a couple of problems with this service. First off, it is listening on the incorrect port. Second, you'll notice that the argument and value pairs do not appear to be entirely correct. Let's first take a look at how we can change the port settings. So the port settings are stored with transport. And here you'll see that I can change the port to a more appropriate value for our environment. Not only that, but we can change all of the settings that were done at recording time. So we can enable SSL and set the settings appropriate for that. We can also, when going into advanced mode, change the remainder of the settings that we do at record time. This is one of the advantages of reconfiguring a service, which is that you don't need to recapture that data. Let's say you were recording at a 2 a.m. window and unfortunately made a couple of mistakes as you were completing. Well, now in the morning, re well rested, you can come back and make the changes and make the service perform exactly as you expected. So we've changed the port now to a more appropriate value. Let's look at the DPH settings and try to understand why the argument name and value pairs were not correct. So here we can see the chain of DPHs. For a SOAP virtual service, uh, XML unfortunately was chosen. And as we can see here, we have the wrong set of name and value pairs. So here we can add an additional DPH to the chain. It might make sense to try the SOAP uh, DPH. And as we can see here, um, with the SOAP DPH selected, we are seeing the name and value pair as expected. However, we have two protocols showing. So by clicking on the next one in the chain, I can view the results of both of these DPHs. And what we see is that the argument name and value pairs are doubled up. This is still incorrect. Now, if I want to compare what's happened along the chain, I can switch to the previous view here and I can see the results of just the web services DPH. And here we see exactly what would be expected. We can also within this view, drag and drop and change the overall order. And now you can see here that the end result, again, continues to be a doubling up. But now we see the results of the previous DPH was the incorrect values that we did not want. So it's pretty easy to figure out. We do not need the XML data protocol and that the web services SOAP protocol is the only one that we need. We see that the values are exactly as expected. And now we can save these changes. Now, with our values changed, we can take a look at our transaction list. And now we see that the um, name and value pairs look exactly as we expect. We can check each transaction here. And now this virtual service is ready.